Welcome to the Aftermarket Report Sunday's edition with Vegas and Jim, supporting traders globally and achieving their financial security and freedom. I love stocks. We have a great watch list for you this coming week and Miss Vegas. Okay, well, good morning, everyone, and hope everyone's having a fantastic weekend. Um, we're actually going to talk about uh, seven different stocks today, so a variety of penny stocks and more of the large cap ones for the options. So um, we're going to talk about GIL, ISR, Goose, CVNA, Lulu, Apple, and ADX. S. So let's get started. So I want to talk to you guys about GIL. I didn't even know, you know, Gil Dan is a Canadian textile apparel clothing company. And uh, I had no idea. I mean, I just, I mean, that just goes to show you how I'm not connected with that fashion line whatsoever. Um, but, you know, they're into t-shirts, underwear, sweatshirts. Um, I've never bought one thing from them. So I was like, wow, I don't think I've ever focused on their brand. But anyhow, um, this company here, um, into the fashion, so I will be looking at them a little closer. And, uh, you know, Jim's the one that actually pointed this one out to me. And I think uh, this one should be on a watch. I think longer term, this has an opportunity here for a move. Um, and definitely, you know, Jim's been eyeing this one as well. And uh, he likes what he sees. So let's hear about Gildan Activewear. And I'm going to add, add this to my fashion list because I like to have a watch list of all the fashion stocks, which, you know, I'm going to talk about some other ones today. So I'm going to add GIL to my list. And Jim, let's hear about GIL. What's happening there? I think GIL is way oversold. We definitely started filling in the gap, as you see here on the year's chart. We had a double top resistance break of 2780 so we need to get back up to about 2983 and if we can break past that that corridor right there of 2983 we can start building up some more but i'd say that's probably going to be your support your resist first resistance level and that's going to be gild so let's pull up the 20-day chart and kind of see if we can find some supports and some resistances just in case we're not in it right now and we want to get in on a pullback. We had the nice little breaking out, breakout that happened on Friday, uh, Thursday. Well, it happened pretty much here in the last week and a half to two weeks. We had a low down here on the 20-day chart of 25.52, and we ended up by the end of the 20-day chart of 29.49. Resistance to break is going to be 29.83. I'm finding the support right here at 28.82, and I'm going to fix that real fast. 28.82 right there, and that was off of another little ascending, ascending triangle breakout right there on on Wednesday, right before Thanksgiving. So your first support's going to be 29.11. That second one's going to be right down here at 29.84, and then I'm going to say that first support level can go no lower than 2839 which is on the 34 EMA on a 20 day 1 hour chart the three moving averages that I trade with right now are the 20 I mean the uh, 9 EMA the 34 and the 200 and I use them as supports and resistance lines so let's pull up the daily 1 minute see if we can find anything else in here that we did break the resistance after hours to 2949 we did have a high of the day of 29.35, and it did hit it after hours, and then had a big pop of 29.49. So that's pretty nice to see that. So our our support levels. Let me pull it up to the five day and see if we can get that one more time. There we go. We got. Oh, that's a nice little spot right here too. I'm gonna stick that in there at 28.63. So the first support is gonna be here at 29.11. You got 28.82, and the ascending triangle right here needs to hold at 28.63. That's almost to the 200 on the on the five-day, five-minute chart, and that's gonna and the resistance that we need to break is gonna be that 29.35. If we can get and build candles above that, we're gonna start going up to the next resistance levels. Let me pull up the one year chart and see if we can find it. It's got to be 29.83. And then may, maybe right around in here, right around 30, 32. Now they have price targets on this. 
at $42. It's been upgraded by Gideon. I think that's what they call that in a way. And then you got a $40 price target and a $36 price target. So we still have a lot of ways to go on GIL. The next one we're going to talk about is going to be ISR. Yeah, so I want to talk about ISORA. I mean, ISORA, you guys know I love medical technology companies, and this is one of them. Um, this company is out in Washington, and uh, they're very into medical technology. They're into expanding treatment options, obviously, throughout the body. And you know what? They had their uh, record revenues. I mean, they did announce their first quarter fiscal 2020 financial results. results. November the 12th, do you believe the revenue for the first quarter grew 48% to a record of 2.32 million versus 1.56 the year before? Um, the reason that the growth happened was that they have a core prostate, um, what they call brachera therapy business. And this represented 90% of their revenue for the first quarter. That is just unbelievable. Um, they also have a non-prostate um, brachy therapy revenue in the first quarter, which is really uh, comprising of sales to treat the brain and colorectal and other cancers. So I'm telling you, this is a really good company to watch. Um, I think the company is going to have continued progress, accelerated growth. Um, I think the results definitely speak to the momentum that they're seeing with the strategic direction. And um, definitely, this is definitely a company I think longer term, uh, you know, should be on watch. Now, one, this is what I love, and this is what's important as well. And then I'll turn it over to Jim. But the cash of this company for the first quarter of fiscal 2020 totaled $4.58 million, and the company has zero debts okay so that's really important especially for a penny stock um that's fantastic so keep isr on your watch and i'm looking for this uh chart to actually have some form of a continuation i'm gonna let jim talk about supports resistances but i'm actually even liking this company um i'm gonna have to do some research myself but i'm actually kind of liking this for a longer term hold uh, for the rest of the year, just because of the strong earnings and what they're building and developing, and also the fact that they have zero debt. I mean, when I hear zero debt, we don't need to do reverse splits in any offerings. So, Jim, over to you. Yes, as everybody knows I am one of the masters at the extended trend line method. And here we have the 2018 trend line still on this chart from last year. And as you can see, they almost come right into permission of what they hit the resistance and supports at. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to erase all of these trend lines. And we're going to start fresh. So let me see. Clear drawing set. We're going to start fresh on this chart. We got a, a, a breakout that we had to make, and that was right here at 49 cents. 49.78 we had a pullback support right here I'm gonna say probably that breakout that had to happen was right here at 45.92 and then I'm gonna just find one more spot in here where I think it could pull back to and be a strong buy just in case it pulls back so let's pull up the 20-day chart as I work this out and I'm gonna put one right here and I'm gonna put one right here and I'm going to put one right here, and then I'm going to put another one right here. So what we're looking for is places where it has consolidated on my candles on a yearly daily chart. Let's pull up a three-year just to have a three-year look. I always like to take a look. It has a little more spots we can go up to. We have a resistance level at 68.74. You see that right here where it consolidated right here at 68 cents 74, and then we had that long breakout. That happened back on 7 9 2018 of a dollar 22 so you know this thing ain't gonna fly to the moon let's keep that in mind but we definitely have us a nice little play it had a nice little four day four week breakout which is you know been about a month and it did kind of flop up right in here to the resistance levels that we did have on the three-year chart of 6235 so now I'm gonna pull up the 20 day digging and trying to find places. I mean, that. see how that, it's kind of lines up pretty well. 
and I'm going to put another trend line right there and another support line right here at 64 I'm going to really tighten it up a little bit higher right there around 64.18 so we're going to pull up the, that's the 20 day and let me mark some red lines in here where I think it could pull back to any chart patterns that I recognize I'm not seeing much I'm just seeing a low 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 support right here and I'm gonna turn that into a red line and that price level was I'll make that a little bit bigger so. right at 45.92 so that's that's 20 cent dip so that'd have to be a pretty hard knife then we had a big run on this thing and I'm gonna put me a trend line right there and that's where I'm gonna call another support level kind of confusing at first I'm just getting these lines in here so we can understand it a little bit more so we got a low support here at 56.43 that's where we're going to call that low support I hate to see it go any lower than that for a, a retracement bounce your first support we did have a, a, a break it looks to me like maybe after hours of 66.01 we did close at 60 cents so the first support is going to be here at 64.18. Your second one's going to be at 62.43. And then that first support at 60 cents. And if it dips down below that, I'd be jumping in it for sure here for a strong buy at 56.43 with a resistance to break at 66. And we're going to bring this up. That's the resistance that we got to break to bring it up to 68.74 and that's going to be one of our hard resistances as I showed you on that yearly chart yeah that's 64.18 so let's see what happens if it gets up to 64.18 and picks up more volume and that's going to be ISR the next one we're going to talk about is one that I notice it looks to me like it's a little oversold also and that's going to be Goose G-O-O-S yeah, so Canada Goose, um, uh, you know, another successful Canadian company, you know, this company's been around, um, you know, started back in Toronto almost 60 years ago, and they're very into the luxury apparel, and, uh, you know, this company, I'm telling you, is doing very well. Um, love the jackets, love the products. But I got to tell you, you got to spend the money to get the stuff. It's barely on sale. I've been to the store. Every time I've been there, similar to like Lululemon, the stuff is very expensive. Um, I do want to mention too, um, you know what? You pay for what you get. I mean, I know people that have had a Canada Goose jacket and they've paid almost $1,000 for it. And they told me they've had it for like seven, eight years already. They haven't even bought a new one and um, it's in great condition and the quality is just there. So, you know what, um, you know, I do believe you pay for what you get. I've seen the stuff, the products are great. I actually don't have a Canada Goose. Um, I just don't like the bulkiness of the actual coat. Um, and I don't really, I'm not out waiting for a bus all the time that I need to get such a warm jacket. Um, but anyhow, it's good for people that go skiing, that are outdoorsy people. I'm not an outdoorsy person, so um, that's just not going to be for me. But hey, you know what? They have other products that I would buy, like the toques and the mittens and things like that. But anyways, keep Canada Goose on your watch. Um, definitely like the chart. I like what's going on. Um, and um, I think we could see some action coming up very, very soon on Goose. The Goose could get loose is what I love to say. Jim, let's hear about the Goose. They are an uptail designer, that's for sure. And these jackets are not cheap. And I am a cold-bodied person because I have, I'm a night owl. I get out and I do, I got me a side business of cleaning. And I'm out there in that cold when that wind's blowing. And the last jacket I got has lasted me almost nine years so I'm about due for a new one so let's check out the um, the yearly chart on it as you know we've had a pretty hard sell-off on this thing yearly high was at $70 and we're sitting here at 38.15 I think it's got a little oversold we definitely have a pivot point area on the yearly chart right here at 44.20 I'm going to change that line into red so I can remember that 
and that's going to be like our yearly pivot point going to be one of our targets to get to and then I got another one right in here I'm going to draw up for another little resistance level so let's pull up the 20 day there's the yearly and we really hard sell off from that 7026 to a double bottom down here right around the 3408 area we did have a 31 67 low and I'm wondering why that drop right there probably wouldn't hurt to go back and check the news out on uh, on 529.19 might have been an earnings report or something we do have lower highs which I think we can get back up to that red line resistance of 44.23 let's pull up the 20 day see if I missed anything here I got a support level right there at 37.39 and then I got another one. I'm going to say probably right about in here, right around 36.94. Then I'm going to have a, definitely another solid support right here in case it does pull back. We do have a fish hook pattern. It kind of created a double bottom. And then it's bounced up here in the last week and a half to two weeks. Had a pull back on Friday. So did everything else. So that was kind of surprised about black friday how it turned out but there was a few good runners that we did mention and that one of them was about cgix we should probably have mentioned that one too on our watch list but uh the resistance that we're going to have to break is going to be this 3903 we can bring it up to this next resistance level of 3951 and then we've got one more resistance right here right at 40 dollars but our hard resistance if you're long on this trade, it's going to be at 44.23. Pullback support, no lower than 35.76. Your second support is going to be here at 36.94. And that first one is right here at 37.91. And just, just take a look at the daily. See if I see anything that's disruptive right here. I'm going to put a $38 one right there. and I'll be watching this trade come Monday morning. Get in the option for long maybe into next year and that's going to be goose keep a good eye on it i think we're oversold and the next one we're going to talk about is going to be cvna so you know cvna's carvana and you guys know i've talked about this one before but just to refresh your memory um you know they're an e-com platform for buying and selling used cars and they have a vending machine where you basically go there, you purchase your car with the vending machine. You get to actually keep the car for seven days. If you don't like it, you can bring it back. And they actually deliver the car to you as soon as the next day. And also pick up the vehicle if you're not satisfied. Um, so this is really, really interesting concept. That, like I mentioned, they have a seven-day return policy. So it gives you a chance to see if the vehicle fits your lifestyle. And, um, you know, they've been doing this since 2016 um, with the new way to buy a car. Um, you know, they have uh, a location in Memphis and also now had their 23rd location now in Tennessee. And um, this is just fantastic. And I mean, I would love to actually go to one of these locations. I mean, they have one in Pennsylvania. They have one in California, Florida, Texas. I just want to just like check it out. I just think it's a really, really cool concept. Um, so Caravana um, is definitely one to watch. I mean, if you guys look at this chart, this thing's been on an upward climb. And you can see that every day every day this thing's just been going non-stop um this is definitely one to watch for continuation because this has now made a 52-week closing high and a 52-week high uh, it is definitely overbought but i think there's still some strength but again this could also pull back but keep this on your watch because this is definitely in a beautiful channel right now uh jim what can you tell us about carvana's chart I'm looking at the yearly right now, and we did have a triple top mm -hmm. breakout at 84.71. So that's going to be our solid low support at the triple top breakout, as you can see, uno, dos, tres. And then we had the um, 
8852 is going to be like your pullback support and that's going to be your solid third support I'm going to pull up the 20 day I always like to look at that 20 day as I start to mill on down on this trade we had kind of oh you could like she says you know on the 20 day chart we had a 20 day low down here at 7264 and we end up taking it up to 99.32 so that's that's a, that's a 25 27 dollar bounce in 20 days so she might be right it might be a little overbought right here if we have a little pullback on this thing it can pull back to the 20 day at the 200 EMA at 85.42 and that is a moving average so that'll move around on you but that's going to be my solid support there for 84.71 for a solid get in it and buy it we did have like a break here and the triple top bam so the first support is going to be right here at 93.94 the second one at 92.22 and then you got a little spot right in here I'm going to say at 89.70 anything below that I would wait for it to get down to that 200 EMA or that triple top which is a solid support at 84.71 and I'm going to pull up the three year chart that's a three year high at 96.44 so let's see if we can get in on the pullback and run it back up and that's going to be C N C V N A and the next one we're going to speak about is going to be um, Lulu. My Lululemon. All you guys know I love going there. Um, so Lululemon, you know, keep this in mind. Um, again, this had a nice inside day on Friday. They also had new 52-week closing highs the other day. This had a little bit of an expansion breakout as well. And um, they have the earnings coming up. It's going to be on um, Thursday after hours. So there could be a lot of hype on the stock. It did have a little bit of a pullback, though, on Friday as well. Um, and then I saw after hours it had a nice little pop. So, um, you know, keep her watch on Lulu. I am in the call uh, for Lulu because of the earnings. So I'm going to just hold it into earnings and see what happens. Um, they've had very strong earnings in the past. So I'm looking to see that they're going to have very good earnings and that Calvin's doing a good job with managing this company. Uh, so Jim, let's hear about the Lulu chart because it's looking beautiful to me. This weekly is just super sexy. Can't complain about a hundred percent gain in one year over a hundred percent. Heck no. 110 double bottom, 11071 all the way up to 229.65. And that happened on uh, Thanksgiving Eve. We had that 229.65 on the yearly chart. I'm also in this stock. I've been trading it pretty well. Um, let's pull up the 20 day, get a look at the 20 day. You see, I'm pretty well got this marked up. Can't make any sense out of it right now. So we're gonna pull up the five day, five minute, and you'll have a better look at what I'm looking at here. We did have a little descending pattern on it Friday, and I think it's gonna squeeze it's either, and we did have like a real solid support here at 225.81. That'd be maybe a good spot for resistance with a double top breakout at the 25, 225.81. So if it dips on down there, I'm going to add to my position and try to cost average down. The resistance that we do need to break though is going to be that 229.56. So right now I'm down a little bit on it we do have a descending pattern as you can see that happened on Friday but everything else the same way it just kind of everything pulled back I'm not sure if the price is already added in on this trade they better pull out some real good earnings the resistance and they have I mean we're talking about billions of dollars so the resistance that we need to break to really amount to something is going to be that 227.46 I have that right in here that's a double top we had. I thought we were going to break it Friday and move on up. We had that hard sell off right into close and it bounced up after hours and kind of pulled back a little bit. So I still think we're going to, we just need to follow the trend on it. If it starts to go pull back a little bit, I might get me in some puts and have it going both ways so I can at least have a safe trade out of it. But that 225.81 is going to be your low, low support that needs to hold. Anything below that is going to be a solid buy. At 225, you know, I could turn that down. I'll probably add there if it pulls back to that position. But 
But the resistance that we got to break is going to be that 227.46 to get it back up to the 230 area, that 229.56 area. And that's Lulu, and I've definitely been bullish on this for a long time. And the next one, we're going to be bullish on it Monday because we have a special reason, and that's going to be Apple. Yeah, so you know what, I am you know talked about Apple before, it's a long-term uh, hold, I think it's a great company to hold on to, and even if it pulls back, you don't need to panic, it's just a really good investment longer term. Um, obviously, uh, Tim Cook doing a fantastic job. You know, Apple has confirmed that they're going to have their Cyber Monday deal, and what can you expect? Uh, obviously, to have some savings buying from Apple and also some of their retail partners. Um, so they are expanding into Cyber Monday, and uh, they're going to uh, they're going to carry over their Black Friday offers into Monday, which is tomorrow. Um, so you can get in some cases a um, Apple Store gift card worth up to two hundred dollars, depending on the products that you actually buy. Um, so depending what you're looking for, maybe you're looking for an iPhone, maybe you're looking for um, a MacBook, maybe you're looking for the AirPods. So uh, you're welcome to check out the Cyber Monday deal and see what uh, you may look to get. And this is kind of the time of the year, I think, where people do a lot of their like holiday gift shopping because you really get better deals, I think, with these Black Fridays uh, versus, you know, the they call uh, Christmas shopping week. Um, or Boxing Day uh, that they have in a lot of cities. So uh, definitely Apple. And you know what? Apple chart to me, still super bullish. Um, Apple just keeps doing it, doing what it wants. It has, you know, the Bollinger Bands are squeezing. Again, 52-week closing highs the other day. Um, this is just keeps going and going and going. And, you know, Apple's just one that you just got to just keep looking at and take opportunities to trade this and hold and then sell at the top and then buy the dips and just keep doing that rinse and repeating strategy. Um, so Jim, let's hear about the Apple chart because it's just looking really nice, beautiful uptrend. Might be a little overbought for a little while, but um, definitely looking really good. Jim, what do you yeah. think? I want to give a shout out to all them Apple lovers out there and especially them employees working down in that new plant in Texas. So if there's anybody out there that's got your ears on, say hi to us below on the comments we'd like to know if you're working in that plant I'd like to hear what you think about it but we do have a resistance up here at 268 that we got a break i have a 260.96 support we did pull back to that last week at two let me pull it up on the 20 day wham bam there you go right there to that support level at 260.96 now i've got maybe could pull back even to this 200 EMA that I have on a 20 day one hour so yeah we're setting up we did have an ascending triangle breakout on it after hours or right into close on Chris on Wednesday on uh, Thanksgiving Eve and she pulled back after hours and then bounced right back up to that resistance level and that resistance level was right there at 267.91 that's what we got to break to get past that 268.56 I think the bulls are still on this trade. I am. Solid buy, if it does pull back, is going to be this triple bottom down here at 260.96. I personally not going to think we're going to see that for a little bit, but it can happen. So that's going to be your low, low support. Your second one's going to be right, oh, I'm going to say your third one's going to be right here at 262.63. At, um, second one's going to be at 264.71, and then we're going to have a third one or first one right here at 265.85 that's going to be your low first support the resistance to break is going to be that 268.41 on my terms 268.56 high and I do believe that could be the three-year high which it is at 268 so keep that in mind if we break that that would be real nice we did have that double top breakout here that happened back in 2018 and ran up to 228.63 and pulled all the way back to that 200 on the three year. So it's, it's, I just love these moving averages. They just fall right into place. That would have been a real strong buy if I'd have no, probably did notice that. Oh, I did notice that because that was at the first of the year when I, my crystal ball came out 
and said we were going to have a great 2019 and it, you know I, I wasn't wrong that's for sure she bounced all the way from 148 all the way up to 268 so that's a hundred and twenty dollar gain that's not too bad for Apple and I still think this thing's way undervalued and can go a lot higher in the long run if if we can keep everything in wrap so the, the next one we're going to talk about is going to be our final one it's a penny play uh, I've had a couple of people ask about me on social media and stock twits which we do appreciate and Howard we want you to get well soon and that's ADXS yes so you know what ADXS at Vaxis Inc really liking this had nice Bollinger Bands are touching and um, the Bollinger Bands are getting wide. I really like this weekly chart. Um, also with this actual company, you know, this company has been around since 2002. They're in uh, Princeton, New Jersey. Um, they also have 48 million shares of sending, as you can see, Jim's showing you a little bit of a corporate overview. Um, and what I like about the company is that they have a lot of stuff in the, you know, clinical pipeline, but they have a lot of milestones coming up. The only thing I do want to caution, as you guys know, is really these biotechs, be careful. You know, you, it's a, it is, you know, I kind of want to say the word like a bit of a lotto, lotto play with these long-term people that I'd like to hold because if the milestone comes out and then the FDA doesn't approve it or they're not approved for the next stage for phase two or phase three, then, you know, obviously your stock basically gets pulled back, um, you know, down. Uh, but you know what? If you love what the company is doing and they're having a lot of good success with their pipeline, um, you know, this is a company maybe you want to look into. Uh, but the, I like the upcoming milestone. In particular, I'm really looking forward to the um, the upcoming ones, specifically the ADXS, the 504, which is the prostate cancer drug. Love to hear some great success with that. Um, and that's obviously in their pipeline. And I love also the one that they're working on, which is the lung cancer one uh, with their partner in Taiwan. That's the ADXS HPV. Uh, so still looking to hear more details on what's happening with this actual company uh, but definitely keep a watch on this this one looks like it's ready to actually have a little bit of a breakout uh, so jim what are your thoughts on this adxs at the moment and some supports and resistances in case uh, some people are interested in taking this trade if they like the company and do their own due diligence i love science so here we go we're going to look at the at the 20 at the yearly Let's see what we got here. We got a three-year. Thing's way oversold. <laughs> I don't know if this is due to splits or what, but man, 150, 90, I, I find that hard to believe. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull up a yearly. Where are you, year? We had a yearly high of 1080. I have a resistance high of 921. This is way oversold in my opinion. I think it's starting to get really bullish. We're going to pull up the 20 day where I can really get a good look at it. 20 day, one hour. You notice on the 20 day how it's rode this 200 all the way up. Then we had that big, nice little run that ran all the way up to 54 cents, all the way down here from 30 in about a week, six days. And then she pulled back pretty hard, sold off, hit that 200 again, found support, and then bounced up and hit a, a little pivot point area in that last run so that's what I'm gonna call as support level right now on this trade alone and I'm gonna put one more trend line right in here that needs to be added to it so we've got a low support on this trade right now at the 4657 and I'm gonna pull up that yearly chart just one more maybe a three month now nah, I can't get nothing out of that we'll go to the one year I'm going to try to find me another long resistance to get to, and I think it's going to be right there at 67.33, and maybe there at 76.66. So let's pull back to 20. Do you see how I did that? You saw one of my tricks with the trade. So low support, 46.57 is a strong buy anywhere in this channel. Right in here between 45 and 46.5, 46.57. Your third support, or your second one's going to be right here at 48.4. Your first one's going to be right here at 
we need to break a resistance of. We did close at 51.42, so I need to break 51.03 to get it up to these new levels. I want to see 54, then I'm going to pull this back to that. Let me see here. I'm just going to give you these other little resistance levels. That ain't going to work. Kind of hard sometimes to get these on here. I have to probably change the time frame. Then we'll go see what a month does. 5808, 6733, and 76.66 are our next three resistances. 5803, 6733, and then we have that 7666 hard resistance right there. And it, I mean, it can fly up more. Pull back support I've already mentioned, and I'll mention that again. We'll go back to the 20 day. And that's going to be that 4657 is going to be a strong, strong buy. That's a pivot point. That's where we had that little double, triple top, double top breakout from right here last Friday. Right there, see. So, I mean, it can dip back down to this channel. And if it does decide to sell off, that's where I think I would like to probably get in this trade. And that's going to be ADXS. And that's it for the aftermarket report on December 1st which will run into all next week of 2019. And Miss Vegas, you have anything? Oh, yeah, I also want to mention, let me pull it up. Yeah, I just want to mention a shout-out to Cheddar Flow. Oh, Cheddar, okay. I mean, you know, we do a lot of options because sometimes I'm not seeing a flow in the penny stocks, so I have to look at other ways for us for people to make money and for small accounts to grow. I mean, I think options is a fantastic venue. Um, and if you want to learn, you know, come visit our room. We have a free trial for anyone that wants to come join. I mean, there's no risk. Just come and see if you like it. If you like it, then you can decide if you want to join. Um, but big shout out to Chatterflow. I mean, we use their platform, gives us real time data on where is the smart money actually going. And then that helps us also um, determine uh, trading ideas that we may like. So very honored that uh, Jim and I were featured in a shout out from Chatterflow and uh, giving us um, a shout out on also giving good trading content. So thank you to Chatterflow for shouting out to I Love Stocks and congratulations to the other traders that were mentioned as well. Um, you're welcome to visit Chatterflow for a free trial. They have a seven day trial that you can try for free. And then if you like it, you can get an additional discount um, if you sign up through our partner site. Um, so we will put up the link for our partner site uh, hopefully later today. And you can click that. And I'll put the link for our uh, in our uh, YouTube video in case you want to try Cheddar. Again, they have a free seven-day trial. And then if you sign up and pay, then you get a discount. So that's it for me. I look forward to you guys um, coming to the room or watching the video. Please like, comment, subscribe. And Jim and I look forward to talking to you again later this week with some trading ideas. Jim, anything else to add? Yeah. Um, we also have links on our website here. Take you to our Twitter page. Please follow us. Subscribe there. If, if you're not involved in our chat room, you can at least get some alerts that we post in there. There's that CGIX. Keep a good eye on that stock. In fact, I'm going to talk about that just for a second here because I didn't, I didn't want to take that off my mind. This is another one that we're just going to kind of throw in here. I got two support levels on this trade. I do believe it can go higher. It's a low float of about 1.76 million CGIX. I got a support level right down here at 665 where we had that breakout. I got an alert set up at 735 and 605 in case that doesn't hold right there. Let me pull up just the, the we did, let me pull up the five day, five day will give a better look. We had a TTM squeeze with an ascending triangle breakout on this Friday and I wanted to mention it on this because I did do a video on this, so if you go back in our YouTube channel, you can watch about a seven-minute recap on CGIX. But we did have a real nice gain on this thing, and we did start to see that we were setting up with an ascending triangle, and it 
the volume started showing some divergence. It started going a little low, it's, which was telling me as the new higher uh, lows came in that the buyers were staying in. And then we had that five point squeeze right here and bam, right into close. It ran all the way up to 950 with a resistance of 894. So that's what we got to break to get back up to that 950. And I do believe this does have social media's attention. Low support is going to be right there at that 745 area. But I did want to mention that because I think this is going to be a good trade to watch next week. Low support, we want it to hold at 745. We want the resistance of 894 to break to 950. And I still think this is good to trade on. And as I was saying, on our website, we do have our stock twit links, Pinterest, and our YouTube channel right here. And all you got to do is hit that link and you can follow our YouTube channel. Uh, and there's that little CGIX review TTM squeeze right there if you want to watch that. This is the aftermarket report, Sunday's edition with Vegas and Jim, December 1st, 2019. And let's have us a good Santa Claus rally into cl close of the year. Nothing like the end of last year, that's for sure. We're definitely a lot more bullish. And we love stocks. Thank you.